Namaste and hello everyone. Welcome back to another video on Melody Rhythm and Soul. In today's video, I'm going to share a couple of Jane Austen inspired books with you and a couple of variations which I stumbled upon uh, while I was trying to make a collection of Jane, inspired, uh, Jane Austen inspired books. So do please join me further in this video. novels first and this is the collection which I have made so far and there's only one book which is left in the series for me to acquire and this series has been conceived by Stephanie Barron and she has been conceiving very interesting um, concepts uh, which are inspired by Jane Austen the one which I really love the most is um, with Jane Austen and Lord Byron, but Lord Byron actually uh, falls deeply in love with Jane Austen and how Jane Austen uh, finally managed manages to get um, Lord Byron in his senses or something of that plot, but I'm not too sure about it. So let me acquire that um, book and let me read it and then I will um, probably uh, do a book review on it. However, first let us get down to uh, this particular mystery series. So if you are a Jane Austen fan and if you love reading Jane Austen and if you really love mysteries then probably this is the um, collection which I would recommend uh, for you. Now the first of the series is called Jane and the Unpleasantness at Scargrave Manor and this is what the uh, cover looks like. I've got the paperback versions so um, from the back of the book it reads as on a visit to the estate of her friend the young and beautiful Isabel Payne Countess of Scargrave Jane bears witness to a tragedy Isabel's husband a gentleman of mature years is felt by a mysterious and agonizing ailment the Earl's death seems a cruel blow of fate for the newly married Isabel yet the bereaved widow soon finds that it's only the beginning of her misfortune as she receives a sinister missive accusing her and the Earl's nephew of adultery and murder desperately afraid that the letter will expose her to the worst sort of scandal Isabel begs Jane for help and Jane finds herself embroiled in a perilous investigation that will soon have her following a trail of clues that was that leads all the way to Newgate prison and the House of Lords a trail that may well place Jane's own person in the gravest jeopardy so this would be the first of the series now let's come to the second book of the series which is called Jane and the Man of Cloth so this is what the series looks like let me just uh, the, I'm sorry the lights shining so here yeah, that's what the book looks like so from the back of the book it reads as Jane and her family are looking forward to a peaceful holiday in the seaside village of Lyme Regis yet on the outskirts of the town an overturned carriage forces the shaken travelers to take refuge at a nearby manor house and it is there that Jane meets the darkly forbidding yet strangely attractive Mr. Jeffrey Sidmouth. What murky secrets does the brooding Mr. Sidmouth seek to hide? Jane suspects the worst but her attention is swiftly diverted when a man is discovered hanging from a makeshift gibbet by the sea. The worthies of Lyme are certain his death is the work of the reverend the ringleader of the midnight smuggling trade whose identity is the town's paramount mystery. Now it falls to Jane to entrap and expose the notorious reverend. Even if the evidence points to the last person on earth, she wants to suspect a man who already may who already may have won her heart so that will be the second of the series so I'm not too sure because it does uh, talk about um, lying so um, it probably could be uh, from uh, 
I mean, it probably may be inspired from persuasion, but um, I'm not too sure about it. Let me see. Uh, let me read it and then uh, confirm that with you. And then the third of the series is called Jane and the Wandering Eye. So this is what it looks like. And um, from the back of the book, it reads as, As Christmas of 1804 approaches, Jane Austen finds herself insupportably bored with Bath and the littleness of a town. It is with relief that she accepts a peculiar commission from her gentleman rogue, Lord Harold Trowbridge, to shadow his niece, Lady Desdemona, who has fled to Bath to avoid attentions of the unsavoury Earl of Sweden. But Jane's idle diversion turns deadly when a man is discovered stabbed to death in the Theatre Royal. Adding to the mystery is an unusual object found in the victim's body, a pendant that contains the portrait of an eye. As Jane's fascination with the scandal leads her deeper into the investigation, it becomes clear that she will not uncover the truth without some dangerous play-acting on her own. So that will be the third in this series. So, the fourth in this series are, I'm sorry, the fourth in the series is Jane and the Genius of the Place. I really love the cover of this. It's really beautiful. And uh, from the back of the book, it reads as, In the waning days of summer, Jane Austen is off to the Canterbury races where the rich and the fashionable gamble away their fortunes. It is an atmosphere ripe for scandal. But even Jane is unprepared for the shocking drama that unfolds. A flamboyant French beauty known for her brazen behaviour is found gruesomely strangled in a shabby chase. While many urge the arrest of a known scoundrel with eyes for the victim, Jane looks further afield and finds a number of acquaintances behaving oddly. As rumours spread like wildfire that Napoleon's fleet is bound for Kent, Jane suspects that the murder was an act of war rather than a crime of passion. Suddenly, the peace fields of Kent are a very dangerous place and Jane's thirst for justice may exact the steepest price of all her life. So this will be the fourth in the series. Now, the fifth in the series is called Jane and the Still Room Maid. I just hope you can see the cover. I really like the uh, way they have designed the cover. Most of them are very pretty. So from the back of the book, it reads as, Jane Austen is enjoying August 1806 among Derbyshire's craggy peaks, sparkling streams and cavernous gorges. That is, until she discovers the corpse of a young gentleman whose blonde curls and delicate features suggest the face of an angel. More shocking still is the coroner's revelation. The deceased is no man but a maidservant clad in the garb of her master, Mr. Charles Danforth of the Penfolds Hall. Tess Arnold has ruled the still room at Penfolds for many years until she was labelled a witch and dismissed for indiscretion. Was Tess the prey for a madman loose in the hills or perchance the cast of impediment to a gentleman's marriage? As usual, Jane's acute perception and her nose for trouble places her supremely at risk from a killer who may strike as violently by day as he once did by night. So I believe this is inspired by um, one of the books of Jane Austen which is called Pride and Prejudice, but um, it is probably loosely connected to it, but I'm not too sure. Let me read it and get back to you with a book review on this. Now, the uh, sixth of this um, mystery collection is called Jane and the Prisoner of Woolhouse, and this is what it looks like. And uh, from the back of the book, it reads as, On a raw February morning, Jane Austen first learns of the case of Captain Tom Seagrave, who faces execution for a murder he swears he didn't commit. Together, she and her brother Frank, a post-captain in the Royal Navy, set out to uncover the truth. 
It is a journey that leads from the troubled heart of Seagrave's family through the seaport's worst sinkholes and finally to the prison of Woolhouse, risking contagion or worse. Jane comes away with more questions than answers. Did one of Seagrave's jealous colleagues frame the unpopular captain? Was a veiled political foe at work and what are the sealed orders under which Seagrave embarked that fateful night on his ship the Stella Maris. So this probably is inspired by um, one of the books, uh, I'm not one of the books I'm sorry, uh, by um, one of uh, Jane Austen's brother Frank who was, I'm not too sure if it was Frank, but um, he was um, one of uh, Jane Austen's own brothers who had joined the Navy and uh, probably this mystery series is inspired by that but there could be some deeper connections to one of her novels as well so uh, let me get back to you with this book and uh, let me do a book review on it so that uh, we'll be clearer on that and then we have Jane and the Ghosts of Netley which I believe is the eighth in the series because I just know I'm sorry that's a seventh in the series and uh, originally I had planned to read this book for um, Halloween uh, last year but unfortunately I could not get around to reading this because I was into so many readathons last year that I just could not uh, get into it at all so I hope this year I will be able to read this on this channel so uh, from the back of the book it reads as as Jane Austen stands before the ruins of Netley Abbey she imagines that ghosts really do haunt the centuries old monastery but the cloaked figure who startles her is all too human and bears an unexpected missive from Lord Harold Trowbridge, one of the British government's most trusted advisers and a man who holds an important place in Jane's life. On His Majesty's brig, Windlass, I'm sorry, that's Windlass, yes, Trowbridge tells Jane about a suspected traitor in their midst. No sooner is she dispatched to Deadly Lodge than Trowbridge's Grim prediction bears fruit. A British, I'm sorry, a British frigate is set afire and its shipwright is found murdered. But before Jane can follow the trail of conspiracy to its source and unmask a calculating killer, the cold hand of murder falls. I'm sorry, yes, a cold hand of murder falls mercilessly yet again, and Jane may find herself dying for her country. So I believe this is. Um, inspired by uh, Northanger Abbey and it probably is a continuation of um, the previous uh, mystery series which we uh, just read about I'm sorry which I just mentioned about as well so that was the sixth and this is the seventh of the series so let's see how this goes and the eighth of the mystery series uh, or the eighth book in this series is called Jane and his Lordship's Legacy and from the back, this is how it looks like. So, this is the book. I really love the cover. It's very beautiful and delicate. And from the back of the book, it reads as, Taking up a new residence at a Shorten Cottage in Hampshire, Jane Austen finds herself heir to an extraordinary bequest, a Bengal chest filled with the late uh, Lord Harold Trowbridge's most intimate personal papers, from these, Jane is expected to write a memoir of the gentleman rogue for posterity. But before she can put pen to paper for this last labour of love, she discovers a corpse in the cellar of her new home. Just as Jane glimpses a connection between the murder and Lord Harold's papers, violent death strikes again. Soon, Jane's racing to catch a cunning killer to protect her lover's legacy and her undying loyalty could exact the costliness price of all her own life so this will be the next book or um, I believe the second last book and the last book I'm yet to acquire however the name of the last book is um, just give me a minute please I think it's um, Yes, uh, there are four more books. Uh, one of them is called Jane and the Bark of Frality, which I believe is um, after this particular uh, book. And we also have A Flaw in the Blood. We also have The White Garden. 
Uh, we also have Jane and the Madness of Lord Byron, which is what I was mentioning about earlier. And then the last in the series is Jane and the Canterbury Tale. So um, let me first finish these uh, eight books. And after that, I will think about Jane Austen and Lord Byron. So this would be the entirety of the collection that I made. And um, so those are some of the books on the mystery series which I have managed to collect. There are a few more um, books which are left for me to complete the series and although I think it is one but there could be uh, quite a few more, maybe four or five more. So I will try to add them uh, after this particular uh, video of course so that uh, you can have a quick look at them as well and add them to your collection. collected for the mystery series. I was planning to share a couple of uh, other books as well which I had collected recently which were variations and retellings and a couple of other books which I did uh, stumble across but I believe that this would uh, elongate the video uh, quite a bit so I, pl I planned to share those books uh, in another video with you. So do let me know how you found this video and uh, also if you really uh, enjoyed um, knowing more about the mystery collection and if you would like to read them further. So uh, with that I will be um, wrapping up this video and uh, till then take care, have a good week ahead and namaste.